First of all, let me mention a few ways in which I've integrated the anatomage table in my science curriculum. When I first, uh, when we first obtained the table, uh, it was a little bit intimidating because this is a very expensive piece of equipment. I think everyone feels that way at first. And uh, I have a classroom of about 25 students. So I uh, question how am I gonna use this one table with uh, all of my students? Now uh, we have an amazing um, technology director. And as you can see in, in this picture, uh, I'm using the table in the back and we have the screen projected here. Uh, Bluetooth projection, and I use, use the table in many ways. I an annotate, uh, this, uh, we have student directed dissection. They tell me what structures to remove or add, uh, and they enjoy doing that. Um, a couple of examples of how I use it in my anato anatomy class, and uh, uh, Jake had mentioned that I do also teach chemistry. so. I've used it both in my anatomy as well as in my chemistry class. Uh, let me go through with the anatomy classes. One of the ways I do this is identifying organs in quadrant. And as you can see here, I have my, my students, some of them, we are a one-to-one -one iPad school. So some of them are doing it on their iPads. Others like to do it on posters. But when we were doing the, uh, the quadrants, I wrote directly on the table. And then I would ask them, what, uh, what organs do you find in the right upper quadrant? And immediately they say the liver. Well, what's uh, beyond that? And we start removing organs and they start, uh, they realize what are the structures in the various organ, uh, quadrants. And then we go into, um, the regions as well, and they see the difference between one and the other. Another way I use it is um, in histology. And this is a lab that they really enjoy doing. Here I have, you can see the girls in uh, the, there's a split screen here and um, on one side, they look for the structures. For example, in this one, we're looking at simple squamous epithelium. Um, and I give them a list of the different organs that, that they, where they would find the simple squamous epithelium. They write the function of the organ, the tissue function, and I have them take pictures so since they have their iPads. I have them taking pictures of the anatomage table and including it within the lab. Now, I also found um, through the University of Indiana, a, a website that let me show you, let's see if it goes, yes, it did. And then they start to focus more and more until they get something very similar to what they observed on the anatomage table. Uh, so that's one of the ways that we use it, that I use it with my students. Uh, I, we also use the Vernier probe. I don't know if some of you are familiar with this. We use it with, it could either be with the TI Inspire. I use the uh, LabQuest, but we do the lab simultaneously with the table. Many times, for example, in this lab, they tell them to hit the, the uh, patellar tendon. So I show, I project it onto the screen. They're also going to be measuring. So they use the measuring tool to measure um, the distance from the spinal column to, to the uh, patellar tendon. And here's an example of how they're doing this. This was a nice little lab because they, they were doing it two ways. One of the ways was first they hit the table and the person had to kick. Uh, the girls had their eyes closed while they were doing that. 
And the second part of the lab, they actually um, hit the uh, patellar tendon and they measured the reflex arch. So they were getting the rate of, um, of reaction and the rate at which the stimulus was being sent. And we actually used a, uh, the female cadaver to measure the distance from um, the brain to the patella and from the spinal cord to the patella and back. So this was uh, an interesting lab they enjoyed. Okay, in chemistry, I've used it in several ways. Uh, uh, I tell them chemistry is the basic science. So everything deals with uh, chemicals. So uh, we, are, we look at uh, the effects of sodium, potassium, calcium, and muscle contraction. Uh, for Boyle's Law, I take them to the table and I show them what happens when um, the diaphragm is lowered? I ask them, what happens? This is the diaphragm. What happens when the diaphragm is lowered? Is volume going to increase or decrease? If volume um, increases, what happens to pressure? And they can relate the chemistry to real life events. Now, uh, while we were doing all these labs, uh, I, my girls are very competitive. So during the UGM meeting last summer, I learned about the Anatomach tournament. So I contacted our sales rep and he was uh, brilliant. He was magnific magnificent and he helped us plan the, the tournament, but the logistics uh, of doing this takes some time. Um, we had to first get approval from uh, administration. So the steps involved in doing this, there were several things we uh, I had to think about. First of all, where will the tournament be held? Obviously it had to be in my room, that's where the table is. Uh, how many of the students would be involved and how did, how were we going to get the students there? Uh, as far as where would they be waiting uh, their turn at the tournament? And also what would be the time frame? Time frame? Uh, when would they uh, be doing it? Would it be during a school day or would it be during a weekend? Uh, for the girls, the weekend didn't seem uh, uh, feasible at that time. So we did it uh, during a school day, and um, we treated it as an in-house uh, field trip for the girls. But besides that, uh, we had to figure out where would the students be waiting their turn at the table, and then after they did the, the um, tournament, where would they, they wait to see if they made it to the, to the next round? And we didn't want them returning back to the same room because they would be talking about the questions that were on the tournament. So I'm gonna show you here uh, the proposal that we turn into administration. And basically we have who are the part participants, how many groups and the date the two different dates that we were given by um, the Anatomage team. And basically the, the, the time frame preliminary round would take about three hours. Then um, the elite eight, what time were the girls going to have lunch? All this had to be uh, scheduled out. So the logistics of it took some time to, to, to accommodate. So uh, again, the facilities, what rooms were going to be used, who was going to be monitoring the students while they were waiting for the tournament. Um, and then the second part was, uh, how was I going to prepare the students and how would they be graded? Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that.
So preparing the students for the tournament. Um, one of the questions would be uh, that we had was, are the students going to be within the same class or do we allow them to, um, to group with other students from other sections? And since uh, we couldn't get an even number if they stayed within their class, I thought it was fair if they could share, uh, they could group up with other, other girls in other classes. Um, this was, this was uh, uh, good for the girls because they took ownership of this process. They decided when they were going to come and practice at the Ananda Match table. They were actually fighting over whose turn was it at the Ananda Match table uh, after school. Many of them came after school or before school. Uh, it was interesting to see the, the process and how the students rearranged themselves. So. Uh, Another thing we had to think about was what topics would we cover? We thought at that point in time, I was covering the skeletal system and the muscular system. By the way, the students, they, when I was covering the muscular uh, system, what I did was I gave them the structures and these are just a few. And then within the class, I assign groups to, to the different structures. So they divided the, themselves into groups and then each group had a specific uh, uh, muscle here where they would find the origin, the insertion, the action. They would take a picture uh, from the anatomage table and the students as a class created a Google slide. In this Google slide, they placed the picture from the anatomage along with origin and insertion. Um, the question here was how were the groups doing this um, if there's only one table? So half the class was actually working, researching origin and insertion, which I know that the new table update does have, um, but I had them looking, looking up the origin and insertion while uh, one of the groups was up at the table doing uh, their work. So here we have, you can see the girls that are working at the table. And I just wanna show you how easy it is for them to get the hang of uh, using the table. It was funny because they actually, they learned how to use it faster than I did. And this is another group. This group liked to color coordinate everything. So they change colors and they wrote everything out on the table. As you can see, this is around Christmas. So they're wearing their reindeer hats. So I want to show you the uh, Google slide that these girls made. Um, they all think they're the best class, but I tell them all that the same thing. But these are the different groups. And it's funny to see the differences between group one and group two and uh, how they arrange their slides. But they have the origin, the insertion. And this I didn't ask them for, but they did it anyway. And it was videos of, of the actions. So all of them went ahead and did this.
So that's part of what, uh, the, what I was mentioning about them taking ownership of what they, they are actually doing, their learning. So they're taking ownership of their learning process. Um, and so all of them, all of them can, can work on the Google slide at the same time. So the different groups are working on the Google slide at the same time. This is another group. And this I found very clever. Again, they add to what the requirements are. This group um, made Quizlets. And as you can see, they go through everything, one group after another. But what I found very interesting was how they did the Quizlets using the pictures from the Ananamaj table. So they have the pictures. And this one is 28. So different groups did this and they all shared together. So it builds camaraderie and, um, and the teams, team building process. Uh, once they had the all the Google slides, they did this for the muscular system. They did this for the skeletal system. In the skeletal system, I do it a little bit different in, in that I divide them into groups and we do have disarticulated skeletons. So here you see them. What are you guys studying? <laughs> so what I do with them is we have the disarticulated skeleton and the, they study as, as a group with the different skeletons. And then they went to the Anatomage table, they played the games on, on the table and here you see the confessional, what I call the confessional, because they're going up uh, one by one and I go over, they have to identify all the different landmarks on the bones. So this is, uh, uh, it takes a lot of time and it takes a, uh, a lot of effort on both the girls and on myself because uh, as I said, I have 25 and they do all of the bones. Uh, but they retain. It's uh, incredible to see how uh, using both the table and the actual bones help them retain the information for, for the tournament. And the tournament, that's one of the things that they themselves realized that they had studied and it's not like I took a test and then I forgot the information. They studied and they actually remembered once they were uh, uh, doing the tournament. Oh, they're doing what they always do, talk at the same time. <laughs> uh, the training sessions. Um, in grading them, what I did was I gave them different quizzes uh, on Socrative. Uh, this is one of the the apps we have, the uh, you can uh, you you can actually access it for free at socrative.com. Um, the school pays for the subscription, so I do have different quizzes, and I took pictures from the table, and I called them training sessions. Uh, there were about five different training sessions for them, and. Let me show you what these quizzes look like. So I highlighted the different muscles. And this is one of the practice quizzes. 
Uh, we do, I did give them a, a grade for the tournament. Uh, that's one of the requirements. Uh, and um, what I did was it was an individual grade for these quizzes and they took, uh, I believe I gave them about five of these and that was 80% of their grade um, for this assignment. And 20% uh, was um, how the scores they obtained during the tournament based on other students. So this is actually the day of the tournament. That's um, that's here. This is the media of this it's interesting to see how they work together and how they divided themselves. Uh, they actually gave, they, they, they figured out a strategy. So we had one student who decided that she was gonna be the timekeeper and uh, deciding where the right and the left is. Uh, it's funny, I don't know if it's uh, a girl thing, but we tend to have problems with right and left. So we had one girl telling, okay, that's the right, that's the left. Uh, the other one was uh, specialized herself on just the skeletal system while the other one did the muscular system and they divided the muscular system into the, um, the limbs and the head and the trunk. So they all gave each other assignments and uh, they were all responsible for this. And it's funny to see them working during during the actual tournament. Um, this is another group. Again, uh, they, they get really into it, but they get a little antsy at times. Okay, so that's during the tournament. And as the tournament was taking place, I also had a um, Google um, sheet where uh, they could see what the scores were for the other team. Uh, uh, and the funny thing was that when we decided on the final four, we called them the fabulous four, uh, we had made a mistake. Uh, one of the teams had uh, actually made it, uh, and it was funny the way they, they emailed me and they said, with all due respect, I believe that uh, we were the ones that won. So they, they really get into it. And being an all-girls school, one of the things they also wanted to do was to uh, challenge one of the um, uh, boys' schools in the area. So they were trying for me to, to, to do that as well. So this is the team, the fabulous four, the last four teams. And uh, this is actually the, the winning group when they realized they, they had won. Oh, man. <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs> so, what was your speech again? I gave a speech. It was like, thank you. Okay, no matter what we do, we're going to put all our evidence on that field. And I'll be proud no matter what, because I know we tried. Guys, guys, guys. It's funny with the girls, uh, they love to, to get their crowns. And I had forgotten to get them the crown. So I made this makeshift crown and they were all excited. They wanted to, to put on their crowns to show that they were the winners. Uh, so it's, it's something that it's motivating and uh, they're learning and we're kind of 
I, I feel I was tricking them into the learning process. Oh, uh, they call themselves the uh, royal family team because they're all wearing their crowns here. And these are the, the last teams that made it. In the middle, we have Sarah from Anatomage that helped us uh, run the tournament on that day. They were actually, what I was saying before, what uh, we did was, this is the room where the uh, tournament was being held. The, we have another room in the back. That's where they waited. And then there was another room where after they had their turn at the tournament, they actually waited to see the results. Um, what I find uh, very motivating here is that they are learning from each other. Uh, they help each other and push each other to, to actually learn the material and retain the material. These are the actual girls uh, talking about the anatomage. And by the way, uh, it seems I have a lot of pictures. I'm not constantly taking pictures uh, of the girls doing their, their work, but this year we were being recertified in STEM, so we needed the artifacts. So that's one of the reasons why I have a lot of the videos and uh, the pictures for the, for, from the girls. So this is what they have to say about the, the table and the tournament. I love the animal table because it makes it easy to see things as a visual student. I like to um, like visually see everything and it helps me retain the information. And when I if you can write on things, then it makes it really easy to learn more. I really like using the animal because it helps me learn and retain information about our body. Variations in like different body shapes and different like, different lengths and different sizes of the muscle and tendons. So it's more accurate in that sense. I really like how it's like a 3D model, so it's easier to tell where it is compared to the book. That's just 2D and it's hard to tell. And you can highlight it too, so it's easier to see compared to all the other muscles. I like how it provides like simple access to the entire human body just through your fingertips. Um, and the tournament was super fun. I thought it was like a really great way to like get the like anatomy classes and engage with the table learning. We also learned how to use the table more, which is great because there's a learning curve and there's a new tool in a classroom. So we got to learn how to use the table as well and how to sort of like just like work with it a lot better, which is helpful in the room. And our stable helped me because in the tournament we got to work with teams and I feel that checking with your partners and your teammates helps you retain the information better. And for me personally, I'm a visual learner, so this table is actually perfect for me because I can interact with it. I can zoom in, I can turn it around, I can use all the tools for my advantage. And I think the anatomy table is great and it helps me learn. Uh, they really do enjoy uh, working with that. And uh, as I mentioned before, I use it on a daily basis when I'm lecturing. I go to the table. Just the other day, it was. Um, it was interesting because we were doing the, um, the cardiovascular system. And I like to use um, Carl because his, uh, his, the, the muscle structure is better, even the, the, the blood vessels. And they were looking at, um, at the veins. They, they were actually looking at the internal jugular and the external jugular. And one of the girls come up, comes up to me and tells me, uh, I don't think this is right. I don't think I can find, I can't remember if it was the right or left internal jugular because it's, it's too small. It can't be right compared to the other side. And I told her, well, it's normal to have one side of the body uh, larger than the other, but how, what, what is the difference? 
And she says, she turns and goes, okay, let's, let's measure it. And she started measuring uh, one side, the left side compared to the right side. It was, uh, it, it was quite different one side from the other. Uh, previously, when they had looked at the nervous system and they had checked the brainstem, they had noticed a uh, sort of hook structure within the, the brainstem. And I don't know, I know that Carl was, um, uh, died through lethal injection. So it wasn't that there was a diseased organ. So I really don't know if that had any factor. And I don't know if uh, in an Anamaj they have directed that or looked at that or really don't know what's the difference, but I'm uh, what I enjoy about it is that I am learning alongside of the girls and they're making discoveries on the Inanimate table that it amazes me the way they, they use it. And uh, now that they just uh, announced about the um, tournament, the high school tournament, I immediately sent out an email to all the girls and um, I said the first 10 that answer me, those are the 10 that will participate in the tournament. And within five minutes, I already had 10 of the girls uh, wanting to be part of the, of the tournament. And now I have a waiting list of girls because they all want to do it. <laughs>